Hey everyone, welcome back to today's podcast. We're going to be talking about a little bit of review of biochemistry as we start to look at specific disorders of galactose metabolism. To help make it more clinically relevant for us, I'll round out this discussion with uh, a case study talking about an infant and metabolism. So we'll start here by talking about lactose. And remember that lactose has the ability to transition to glucose or galactose, but it does require the enzyme lactase. And you'll remember that lactase is an intestinal disaccharide that helps make that transition. As we're moving down the diagram, the galactose can be transformed to galactose 1-phosphate via the use of galactokinase. The next step is a little more complicated. As we move from galactose 1-phosphate to glucose 1-phosphate, there are several things that have to happen independently in order for this to occur successfully. The first one is you have to have the transfer of uridine diphosphate from UDP glucose to UDP galactose. Unfortunately, this reaction is catalyzed by the galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase, or GALT, G-A-L-T. Now, if either of these things does not occur appropriately, you're going to have a problem. The problem that we're most likely to have if any of these three enzymes don't function properly is galactosemia. If we start to think about this systematically, we can understand how these kids are going to present so if the GALT, if there's a deficiency there, there's a toxic buildup that's gonna, gonna happen. There's gonna be an accumulation of galactose 1-phosphate, and that's gonna be responsible for some dysfunction that we're gonna see in both the liver and the kidneys. You're gonna see that the transaminases are gonna be elevated, there's gonna be hyperbilirubinemia and hypoglycemia. As far as the kidneys are concerned, there's gonna be renal dysfunction. There's going to be some metabolic acidosis. There's going to be some amino aciduria. So how would these patients present? Likely on exam, their liver is going to be enlarged, the transaminases are going to be elevated, and they're going to be hypoglycemic. Not to mention the dehydration and everything that goes along with that, such as tachycardia, tachypnea, and hypotension. The presentation of vomiting and lethargy soon after a mother starts breastfeeding is pretty common in these kids. So the treatment for these kids can be simple. Remember that breast milk has a high lactose content and if you switch these kids over to a soy milk based diet, remember soy milk is sucrose based and it doesn't require the same metabolism. Soy based milks are metabolized to glucose and fructose. Neither glucose or fructose require the GALT or the GALK to enter the glycolytic pathway and generate energy. So by using these as an alternative to lactose, you're going to clear these kids from this problem. So as I said, let's just quickly run through a case study and talk about how these kids are going to present for us. These kids are going to look sick. Mom and dad are going to present to you, to your office or to the emergency room, complaining of, you know, a two, three, four, five day old baby who's had emesis. And um, this started after mom started breastfeeding. And the baby's going to be in some distress. Um, the baby's going to be dehydrated because it's not eating or drinking. Uh, baby's going to be tachycardic and tachypnic, probably hypotensive. When you start to examine the baby, you're going to see that the baby has a sunken font now. Likely the baby's going to have panomegaly. It's going to be hypoglycemic. So this picture, I hope, will start you thinking um, about what's going on with this baby. Clearly the baby's getting plenty of nutri nutrition, but it can't function or it can't use it effectively. So you should start to think about enzymatic deficiencies or what's going on here with this baby and hopefully I've provided you with enough keywords to latch on and make a quick diagnosis.